What Dr. Youssef's found and talks about in End Times and the Secret is how what's going on in our world right now is leading straight towards those events prophesied in the book of Revelation. He's going to cover the whole world. He's going to rule the world, and he's going to declare himself, and he's going to turn on the Christians and the Jews. There's numerous striking similarities to what the Bible describes with regard to the Antichrist. In a world shaped by ancient prophecies, a figure cloaked in mystery has emerged, destined to carve a new narrative in the annals of history. The Antichrist, a terrifying force foretold in biblical passages, is no longer some distant threat but is now, and in fact, already among us on earth. Join us as we unravel the proof that the Antichrist is already on earth. The Diplomatic Chessboard of the Antichrist At the height of political power, the mysterious figure prophesied to be the Antichrist emerges not just as a leader, but as a masterful person, weaving the destinies of disparate nations into a single detail, hanging under the umbrella of a unified government. The cryptic verses in Daniel 7.23 foretell the Risi of a fourth kingdom, an extensive kingdom that stretches its influence across the globe, maintaining control over a multitude of various nations. This prophecy paints a striking picture of a geopolitical chessboard manipulated by the Antichrist's cunning strategies. In the huge theater of global politics, the Antichrist takes center stage as a captivating political master, his charismatic atmosphere and convincing delivery promise a paradise of peace and prosperity, seducing the masses into a false sense of security. Yet, beneath this covering of honesty lies an evil agenda, leading the people astray from their spiritual harbor. The theory, steeped in affairs, underscores the key role of diplomacy and political understanding in the Antichrist's rise to power, turning the political landscape into a captivating drama of power and crime. The Antichrist is a sensitive master, skillfully organizing unions among nations to gather the necessary support for his popular designs. No very trespasser in the Third Temple, he understands that public sentiment can be a potent weapon. His quest for a new world order demands not only intelligence, but also an unparalleled charm, a magnetic attraction that makes him not just a leader, but an irresistible force, exciting hearts across borders. Donald Trump, a name that resonates in the echo chambers of assumption. In the grand theater of global politics, some view him as a potential image of the Antichrist. His actions and statements, examined with a magnifying glass, become plot twists in an unfolding drama. As the 2024 White House race unfurls, the spotlight once again focuses on Trump, intensifying the suspense surrounding his every move. The question of whether he is the Antichrist becomes a gripping narrative, a storyline interwoven with elements of charisma, power, and divine destiny. Yet, in this narrative of the affair, another unexpected character emerges, Barack Obama. Despite his widespread popularity, the undercover whispers call him a potential antichrist. The irony of such suspicions surrounding a charming leader adds layers to the unfolding drama. Around one in four Americans, caught in the web of conspiracy theories, cast a suspicious eye on Obama. The drama unfolds, not just in the political arenas, but also in the minds of the people as the Antichrist theory takes center stage, putting Obama in a league with the most unusual of crimes. Amidst the labyrinth of theories, the need for wisdom and discernment echoes as a guiding principle. The revelation of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, becomes a climactic moment in the narrative, ensuring that when the veil is lifted during the rebellion, his identity will be starkly evident. As the world watches and speculates, our responsibility lies not in hasty judgments, but in navigating the interesting twists and turns with a discerning eye, grounded in the teachings of ancient prophecy. The Rise of the Political Beast The idea of an upcoming confrontation with the Antichrist stirs a sense of urgency, positioning us as a very foot soldier in a grand heavenly battle. In the detailed hanging of Revelation, the beast takes center stage, becoming a symbol in the huge struggle. It's not surprising that the heated evangelical core of the Republican Party, in their mobilized state, 
emotionally delves into the past to revive ancient conceptions as their world undergoes disturbance. Consider this leader, arising post-rapture, initially describing himself as a messenger of peace. His seamless entry into the world is marked by natural ability, mirroring the wisdom of Washington, the leadership of Lincoln, the captivating nature of Roosevelt, the allure of Kennedy, the believability of Barack, and the determination of Trump. A clever mind with a balance of emotional and intellectual intelligence, he presents himself as exceptionally smart. His grand entrance onto the world stage unfolds on the platform of peace, standing out among the myriad politicians from various parties. Within this spectrum, where good and bad politicians coexist, the focus turns to the looming figure of the supposed Antichrist, a billionaire endowed with immense wealth and power. In this narrative, he is prophesied to dominate governments worldwide, manipulating the functioning of societies with his huge financial influence. Controlling the media and influencing political leaders, he holds the reins of power with everything under his command. Drawing parallels to the symbolism in Revelation 13, the imagery of the wild beast with seven heads unfolds as a representation of the global political system with authority, power, and an extended throne. It hints at a political entity that surpasses individual nations. Arising from the wild masses, symbolizing humanity's source of governance, this beast embodies a collection of political institutions across the globe. The number 666, referred to as the man's number, underscores the human nature of the beast in Revelation 13. It is not a spiritual or demonic entity, but rather a human one. The seven heads are interpreted to signify seven kings or governments, representing the principal political powers that have historically oppressed God's people. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and Anglo-America stand as exemplars of these dominant forces. The horns, if we consider them to represent all governor states large and small, showcase the band on each as a symbol of accompanying rule with the primary political power of the time. Together, they unite in their determination to maintain authority, resisting submission to the rule of God's kingdom. As the narrative unfolds, the impending conflict takes shape under the guidance of the Antichrist, who leads nations to battle against God. The Secret of a Billionaire's Influence on Nations and Faith Consider the interesting strategy of a billionaire whose influence extends to shaping the course of nations worldwide. Elon Musk, a name that often dominates discussions about the wealthy and powerful elite, is an individual capable of not only steering global leadership but also wielding significant control over media narratives. The multifaceted dimensions of Musk's influence. Some interesting theories state that Musk, with his relentless efforts to propel humanity toward Mars, has also ventured into acquiring Twitter, potentially as a bastion for the preservation of free speech. As time unfolds, the intricacies of Musk's grand plans are expected to unravel, possibly unveiling a strategic alignment with unconventional and groundbreaking endeavors. Musk's deep involvement in the burgeoning field of blockchain technology underscores his forward-thinking approach, recognizing its transformative potential as the bedrock of the future. The captivating scene of a Hebrew newspaper boldly featuring a prominent image of Elon Musk, accompanied by a distinctive stamp accusing him of being the Antichrist. The newspaper doesn't mince words, vehemently rebuking Musk for allegedly transforming platforms like Twitter into arenas that foster racism, hatred, and anti-Semitism. In the realm of modern speculations, there's a riveting connection drawn between the Antichrist and cutting-edge technology, specifically artificial intelligence. The thought-provoking belief suggests that an entity, inspired by the spirit of the Antichrist, described in the Book of Revelation, could harness technology to manipulate and control humanity. This theory has given rise to suspicions among some that Elon Musk, with his profound influence on technology and space exploration, might be the elusive Antichrist. Traditional descriptions of the Antichrist paint him as a malevolent figure opposed to God, rising to power in the end times and leading people astray from true faith. Against this backdrop, Elon Musk's attractive personality, 
coupled with ambitious plans for interplanetary colonization and neural implants, prompts attention. The question lingers, does having unusual plans automatically brand him as evil? Different opinions arise, with some hailing Musk's initiatives as innovative and inspiring, while others view them with disbelief, questioning their potential harm. The discourse delves into the uncertainty surrounding Musk's true intentions, acknowledging the doubt that surrounds his identity and motivations. Despite Musk's huge wealth and influence, the conversation takes an interesting turn by considering the possibility that, guided by a strong moral compass, he could wield his resources for global betterment. The idea unfolds that Musk, with the potential to shape progressive and positive messages, might become a force for good in the world, answering any negative reasoning. The narrative extends to explore the concept of an apostate church leader, introducing a layer of mystery suggesting that the Antichrist may emerge from within the Christian church but deviate from its fundamental tenets. Biblical passages warning of a departure from faith in the end, times add a mysterious dimension to the discussion. In conclusion, Elon Musk's narrative is painted with layers of complexity, blending admiration, disbelief, and suspicion. The exploration of his actions, beliefs, and influence reveals a minute change of viewpoints, offering a striking glimpse into the detailed dynamics of assessing individuals using great power and their potential impact on society. The Antichrist's Deceptive Reign This theory proposes that the Antichrist will cunningly manipulate religious doctrines to serve their hidden agendas, leading people astray from the path of true faith. No one will possess the ability to oppose his influence. His power will surpass that of any king, president, or prince preceding him. He will be not only revered, but worshipped, and his earthly kingdom will appear boundless. Beyond mere political consolidation, he will also achieve unity across all religions under his dominion, accomplishing what Buddha, Muhammad, popes and pastors could never aspire to. The Antichrist will forge a global worship centered not on Jesus but on himself, utilizing diabolically empowered plans to ascend as the ultimate Caesar of the revived Roman Empire. How can one identify the Antichrist? The Bible forewarns believers of the arrival of false prophets and Antichrists, preceding the actual emergence of the false prophet and the Antichrist. As believers, it becomes imperative to discern the signs of the Antichrist's influence in our contemporary era. A conspicuous sign is the surge of secularism and the rejection of God's moral values. Increasingly, people prioritize their desires over the well-being of others, contravening Jesus' teachings of love and selflessness. The spirit of the Antichrist flourishes in a world fixated on human desires rather than aligning with God's plan. Furthermore, the diminishing reverence for Jesus Christ and the proliferating of anti-God sentiments in society indicates the growing influence of the spirit of the Antichrist. The global prevalence of lawlessness and the waning fear of God collectively set the stage for the imminent arrival of the Antichrist. How can these individuals be recognized? A false prophet will not prioritize consulting the Bible. Genuine teachers will consistently turn to the Bible first and foremost employing other sources of information to complement scripture, but ensuring that the foundation of their message is firmly rooted in, thus says the Lord. If alternative sources begin to overshadow God's word, caution may be warranted. Even if they do reference the Bible, false prophets may engage in cherry-picking, selectively using verses to suit their ideological stance. While they may mention Jesus or the gospel sporadically, they twist scripture to conform to their specific perspective. If someone selectively quotes certain verses while disregarding the rest, they may be identified as a false prophet. A true teacher, on the other hand, seeks after God. While acknowledging that pastors and Christian influencers are not exempt from imperfections, a genuine teacher does not exhibit pride but rather embodies qualities like love, joy, and peace. Conversely, false prophets may display characteristics of hate, anger, and division. Lastly, a true teacher encourages righteous living and discourages indulgence in sin, while false prophets may promote and condone sinful behavior. The Cosmic Battle Between Light and Darkness A dedicated and authentic teacher 
committed to the pursuit of wisdom, unfurls the rich hanging of scripture as their primary guide, steering clear of the murky waters of malevolence. On the flip side, a denizen of darkness revels in the sordid pleasure of wicked deeds, enticing others to follow their desires, even if it means straying from the hallowed teachings of Scripture. The annals of the Church's history are replete with the indelible stain of false teachers, an age-old challenge that has persisted since its very inception. Amidst the current milieu of speculative whispers surrounding the Antichrist, ranging from political titans to affluent magnates, Christians are beckoned to recognize that, as the Antichrist ascends, his true nature may become glaringly evident. While the profile of this enigmatic figure remains elusive, there exists an opportunity to fortify ourselves, cultivating a discerning eye for the moment when this nefarious persona seizes control and opposes the devout. In the impending crescendo of Christ's imminent return, Satan, the arch-fiend, orchestrates a symphony of malevolence to thwart divine plans. His diabolical maestro is the man of lawlessness, a potent leader who wages war against the faithful, orchestrating a rebellion against the sacred work of God. Dubbed the deceiver and the antichrist in biblical lore, this cunning figure deploys a web of lies to seduce countless souls away from the path of Christ. Hence, Anchoring our lives in the sacred truths of the Bible becomes a celestial bulwark against the siren song of deception. Adopting the Bible as a daily companion, a source of enlightenment through reading, studying, memorization, and learning from sages well-versed in its teachings, serves as a fortified citadel against the insidious ploys of deceitful charlatans. With the bedrock of God's truth entrenched in our hearts, we transform into steadfast beacons, no longer swayed by the capricious winds of fleeting doctrines or the Machiavellian schemes of artful deceivers. In the ceaseless pursuit of the divine, we must discern and denounce anything or anyone that threatens to cast shadows between us and the Almighty. A spiritual idol standing in the way of unbridled connection with the Lord. Satan, the wily adversary, yearns for worship and in the absence of explicit adoration. His plan B is to disrupt our intimate communion with Jesus, the harbinger of faith. Venturing into the bastions of education, where power often coalesces, Satan insidiously infiltrates through indoctrination, disseminating anti-God ideologies, peddling pseudo-scientific fallacies, and championing distorted versions of social justice. In the face of these intellectual battlegrounds, believers are summoned to be vigilant and discerning, wielding the armor of divine wisdom. As the cosmic drama unfolds, Jesus' admonition echoes through the corridors of time, be ever ready, for the Son of Man will arrive at an hour unforeseen. God's love, personified in Jesus, beckons believers towards an authentic existence, offering true life to those who ardently believe and follow in his footsteps. In this cosmic dance, genuine believers find their purpose illuminated by the radiant beacon of love, standing in stark contrast to the antichrists who spurn Jesus' humanity and repudiate God's love, rendering them bereft of the capacity to love others. The digital tune of sin, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, the great wickedness during Noah's time, and the debauchery of Babylon have woven themselves into the fabric of our contemporary society, creating a tapestry steeped in moral decay. Imagine this societal amalgamation as a dark symphony playing out through the ages, with each historical sin contributing a haunting note to our modern composition. As we draw parallels between our times and those biblical eras, the resemblance becomes more than just uncanny. It's an eerie echo. Our current society, in all its technological and digital splendor, has transformed into a hybrid of the gravest sins from various biblical epochs. It's as if the echoes of Sodom's indulgence, the wickedness that tested Noah's resolve, and the seductive allure of Babylon have found a new home in the heart of our civilization. In the past, sins were confined and tied to specific cultures and periods. However, in our contemporary reality, 
sin has transcended these boundaries. Now, with a mere click, one can order and have sinful indulgences delivered to their doorstep, blurring the lines between temptation and convenience. The once daring escapades outside the home to engage in wrongdoing have been replaced by the ease of accessing explicit content, participating in cyberbullying, falling prey to online scams, and spreading falsehoods, all within the cozy confines of one's abode. This unprecedented access to sin has woven a complex tapestry that poses new challenges for believers. The spiritual battleground now extends into the digital realm, and the faithful must be vigilant in safeguarding their hearts and minds from the onslaught of temptation that is just a click away. Turning our attention to the New Testament narrative, where Satan tempts Jesus three times during his desert fasting, we uncover a nuanced understanding of the adversary's tactics. Satan's alluring proposals to turn stones into bread, offer dominion over everything, and tempt Jesus to leap from the temple reveal a cunning strategy, enticing offerings in exchange for allegiance and disobedience to God's word. These biblical lessons come alive with relevance in our contemporary context. The subtle influence and temptation away from the divine path mirror the insidious strategies deployed by the devil today. The evidence and insights pointing to the presence of the Antichrist among you's add a layer of urgency to the need for recognition of these signs. Envision Satan leading Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple, urging him to take a leap of faith and trust in divine intervention. This wasn't merely a test. It was a theatrical spectacle aimed at convincing unbelieving onlookers that Jesus was the Messiah. The consistent theme emerges. Satan offers seemingly good things to Jesus, but demands worship and disobedience in return. It's a chilling reflection of the deceptive tactics the devil employs in our lives today, tempting us with alluring and gratifying things while quietly demanding the neglect of prayer and turning away from God. Peering into the future, the anticipation of the Antichrist employing a similar strategy adds a layer of suspense to the narrative. Much like Satan tempting Jesus with transient pleasures, the Antichrist is poised to entice humanity with seemingly benevolent offerings, steering them away from the divine path. It's a psychological chess game, and staying vigilant against this cunning pattern requires a keen understanding and a steadfast resolve to resist the allure of deceit. Revived Empires to Artificial Intelligence The theory of the revived Roman Empire, a concept embraced by certain interpreters of biblical prophecy, in their perspective, the Antichrist is predicted to emerge from a resuscitated or reconstructed Roman Empire, often drawing parallels with contemporary entities such as the European Union or other Western organizations. This theory hinges on the interpretation of the beast mentioned in Daniel 7 and Revelation 13. Additionally, Revelation 17, 9 paints a foreboding tableau with a woman seated on a beast declaring that the seven heads represent seven hills on which the woman is positioned. This allusion to seven hills has sparked extensive speculation, particularly tying it to Rome's historical identity as the city on seven hills due to its geographical setting enveloped by seven prominent hills. Consequently, the assumption is formulated that the referenced system must bear a connection to Rome, given that the Roman Catholic Church is headquartered in the city. Several biblical passages, including Daniel 9.27, 2 Thessalonians 2.3.4, and Revelation 13.5.8, contribute to discussions about an anticipated antichrist leading an anti-God movement in the end times. Thus, the conjecture persists that the perceived malevolent world system in the end times is intricately associated with Rome. However, this interpretation faces opposition from certain Bible experts, who assert that the woman in Revelation does not symbolize the Catholic Church, and the seven hills do not necessarily refer to Rome. Instead, they contend that Revelation 17.18 identifies the woman on the beast as the city of Babylon, located near modern-day Baghdad, not Rome. According to this perspective, 
The seven hills symbolize seven kings ruling over seven world empires, considering the historical context outlined in Revelation, where five empires had already passed. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece, with Rome being the current empire and one more yet to come. This interpretation challenges the conventional linkage between the seven hills and the city of Rome, redirecting attention to a broader historical narrative of world empires. Alternative theories also abound, such as the religious leader theory, envisioning a one-world religion crafted through deceptive miracles and signs, drawing attention to the spiritual deception described in 2 Thessalonians 2:3-4. Another perspective is the apostate church leader theory, positing that the Antichrist might arise from within the Christian church, representing an apostate form of Christianity that denies essential doctrines. This interpretation derives support from passages referencing apostasy or falling away in the end times as found in Timothy 4 hat 1 2. Before the Antichrist is revealed, the Apostle Paul, in 2 Thessalonians 2 3 8, outlines two critical events. Firstly, there will be a falling away from the faith where many individuals turn away from the truth, leading to seven years known as the tribulation. This departure from sound teachings, termed apostasy, is seen as a contemporary trend with people increasingly abandoning their faith. Following this falling away, the Holy Spirit referred to as he who now restrains will be taken away during the rapture when all believers both living and deceased, ascend to heaven, and the constant presence of the Holy Spirit departs from the earth. The Holy Spirit works through believers to restrain the spread of evil in the world. However, after the rapture, He will no longer be restraining evil. Thus, with the Holy Spirit no longer holding back evil and widespread apostasy in the church, the stage will be set for the Antichrist to be revealed. In a modern twist, some contemporary theories propose that the Antichrist could be linked with or even embodied in an artificial intelligence system. This theory revolves around the deceptive and controlling attributes attributed to the Antichrist in the Book of Revelation, drawing parallels with the advancement of technology and AI in the contemporary world. The Clarion Call to Spiritual Vigilance In the evocative passage of 1 John 4.3, the Bible delivers a poignant admonition, asserting that those who fail to recognize the profound presence of Jesus stand apart from the divine, exposing the insidious influence of the Antichrist spirit, entrenched in the very fabric of our world. As we delve into the intricate tapestry of contemporary trends, believers keenly discern the unmistakable crescendo of the Antichrist spirit's resonance. One cannot help but be captivated by the ominous surge of secularism, an ascendant force that brazenly defies God's moral compass. This cultural paradigm shift is accompanied by an unsettling emphasis on self-centered desires, eclipsing the altruistic teachings of Jesus that exalt love and selflessness. The Apostle John, in his nuanced discourse on the Antichrist and the prologue to his imminent arrival, unravels a narrative woven with threads of the same malevolent spirit. The ebbing reverence for Jesus Christ and the surging tide of anti-divinity sentiments manifest as a palpable undercurrent, cresting in the form of societal lawlessness and the gradual disappearance of Bibles from the public domain. Together, these societal metamorphoses pave the sinuous way for the Antichrist's impending advent. Yet, contrary to the anticipation of cataclysmic global upheavals upon the Antichrist's arrival, a compelling counter-narrative emerges. A school of thought posits that the world is not awaiting transformation, but is already primed for the arrival of this ominous figure. The global dissemination of the Antichrist spirit, eroding the innate fear of God, seamlessly aligns with the prophetic signs outlined by Jesus in the Bible, portending the culmination of Christ's reign in the final epoch. The imperative, therefore, is not merely passive acquiescence to the unfolding of world events, but an active stance against the adversary's surreptitious infiltration into the sacred sanctum of one's spiritual existence. 
The council, resounding like a clarion call, implores believers to surrender not just their words and actions, but the entirety of their lives to the governance of Christ. In this exhortation lies a profound caution against stumbling into the snares set by those who have strayed from the path of faith, careening back into the abyss of sin as if the return of Christ were an indefinite abstraction. Amidst the undeniable manifestation of signs heralding the imminent return of Jesus, skepticism weaves its thread into the narrative, with dissenting voices asserting that such signs have perennially punctuated history. Yet wisdom calls for discernment, acknowledging that the present signs exhibit unparalleled clarity and urgency. To live in defiance of the sacred tenets propounded by the Word of God is to court vulnerability and unpreparedness in the face of an impending spiritual tempest. The clarion call transcends the realm of passive observation, beckoning believers to actively guard against the adversary's relentless encroachment. The reign of Christ, in its resplendent glory, should not be restricted to a mere external display, but should spread throughout and govern every corner and cranny of life. The signs pointing to the return of Jesus are not mere abstract symbols, they are striking, trembling reminders of a spiritual reality. The wise, therefore, do not dismiss these signs with nonchalant doubt, but heed the call to vigilance and preparedness in the face of an unfolding celestial drama, divine warning and the urgency to embrace righteousness. It is critical not to be caught off guard, especially if we have not yet repented for our sins and embraced Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Imagine the hugeness of His love for us, a huge and endless affection as He eagerly awaits our heartfelt decision. He extends a gentle yet urgent warning illustrated strongly in the Scriptures. Above all, sense the genuine understanding that in the darkness of days doubters will arise. Individuals mocking and boldly pursuing their wicked deserts, casting shadows on the upcoming divine promises. In the face of doubt regarding the eagerly awaited return of Jesus, some boldly question when this grand event will unfold, callously disregarding the signs and eagerly acknowledging that everything has continued unchanged since the dawn of creation. However, let's not forget the poetic truth that it was by God's spoken word that the majestic heavens and earth came into existence. In the explosive scene when water, an elemental force, flooded and destroyed the world of that time, the current heavens and earth, surrounded in suspense, reserved for a fiery destiny, await the day of reckoning and the upcoming destruction of the ungodly. Addressing concerns surrounding the certainly extended delay, believers are gently nudged to remember that for the Lord, time operates on a different scale. A day is similar to a thousand years, and a thousand years very moments. The Lord's enduring patience is an outpouring of His deep desire for all souls to repent, with no wish for anyone to meet a tragic end. While some suspiciously raise an eyebrow at this delay, Rest assured that the day of the Lord will outspread unexpectedly, quietly creeping in like a thief in the night. The heavens dissolved with a resounding roar, the elements succumbing to an all-consuming fire, laying bare the hidden secrets of the earth. In the wake of these coming heavenly events, believers are summoned to reflect deeply on the profound question of what kind of people they ought to be. The warning echoes to live lives adorned with holiness and godliness all the while actively expecting the arrival of the day of God. This serves as an urgent reminder that, during the unfolding signs and the Lord's patient waiting, individuals possess a unique opportunity to embrace righteousness, fervently seek repentance, and align their earthly existence with the celestial purpose of God. As the day of God draws near, the call to live a life completely dedicated to the divine gains a remarkable sense of urgency, painting a colorful hanging of spiritual importance and lasting purpose. What are your thoughts on the proof that the Antichrist is already on earth? Let us have your opinions in the comment below.